When it comes to avalanche awareness, there is one factor that never changes, and that's the terrain. If we can understand and recognize avalanche terrain, then we have a major advantage when we head into the field. Steepness is one of the most definitive factors in determining whether a slope will slide or not. Slopes between 35 and 45 degrees are where most human-triggered avalanches occur. As simple as it would be to just avoid this terrain, this also happens to be the most fun stuff to ski. Just think of your standard black diamond ski run. This is commonly the perfect angle for an avalanche to occur. For slopes less than 30 degrees, the stress on the snowpack tends to be greater pushing into the slope than it is downslope. This helps hold the snow in place. While avalanches are much less common on slopes less than 30 degrees, they are not impossible. In fact, it's possible to get avalanches on slopes with an angle as low as 20 degrees. For slopes steeper than 45 degrees, the downslope component of stress due to gravity is so great that the snow has a hard time bonding and cohesive slabs usually don't form because the snow is constantly shedding off. Although less prone to catastrophic avalanches, these slopes have an increased amount of other hazards that require their own cautious approach. And for this reason, slab avalanches mostly occur on slopes between 30 degrees and 45 degrees. Determining the level of consequence an avalanche poses is one of the most important factors to consider when evaluating terrain. There are certain features of terrain that can multiply the consequences of an avalanche, and we call these terrain traps. If you think about avalanche statistics, you'll see that the largest survival factor is time spent buried. Next on the list was trauma. If we think about the terrain, which might increase burial depths, we see that any feature that allows snow to build up into a deeper deposit is a danger. Gullies or glacial crevasses are high consequence examples, but this can also happen anywhere where the snow is able to become trapped and pile up, like a sharp angle change at a valley bottom, lake or flat section. The more snow is allowed to pile up, the deeper the burial. When considering the impact of features, we should think about what would happen if we were to tumble at high speeds through it. What objects would cause harm on impact? We often find ourselves skiing through forested areas, and this can be hazardous when caught in an avalanche. Other high consequence features include cliffs, shallow rocky outcrops, or anything we could hit or become airborne off of. Terrain traps are numerous, and it's important we evaluate the worst case scenario of being caught before we enter avalanche terrain. When we take a close look at possible avalanche terrain, we want to start to pick out common trigger points. These points are usually found in areas where either the stress on the snowpack is high or where the overlying slab is thinner or softer, allowing the weight of the trigger to reach deeper into the weak layer. Probably the most important and obvious trigger is the convex roll. A convexity is where the slope steepness as it descends down the slope results in a rollover. If a slope is steepening and you can't see the bottom, you're entering a convexity. Convex rolls create outward stress at the apex, weakening the bond of snow. Slab avalanches are often initiated here. Next is anywhere the snowpack varies in depth or strength. Think of how the surface snow is interacting with the terrain below, where the snowpack transitions from deep to shallow over the underlying terrain can be a common trigger point. Treed areas can also create a weakening effect on the snowpack as they break up the cohesiveness of the surface slab. Often we see avalanches running from tree to tree along the crown line, anywhere under cornices or rock faces where the surface snow tapers from the deep snowpack into a feature is also a potential trigger area. 